So you want to build a guillotine, goes, goes, but you're just goes, not goes, sure goes, if it's goes, a good goes, investment. Goes. I mean, I get it. There's a lot to consider. How long will it take to build? But more importantly, how much will it cost? Now, anyone who's been following my channel will know this is not a guillotine. It's just a very guillotine-shaped lemonade stand. But semantics aside, the cost to build is pretty much the same. Anyone who works in a construction-related industry is well aware of the greatly fluctuating price of lumber. Luckily for me, at the time that I purchased all the lumber for this series, the price was just coming down from a near all-time high. Thank God I didn't purchase three months earlier. And well, I'm not the best when it comes to money or finances, but this question kicked my autism into high gear. So I decided to count every board, nail, screw, and fastener to give all you curious craftsmen a rough estimate of the cost so far. Okay, so after that painstaking task, I counted 42 2 by 6 by 10 After counting all the lumber, 899 screws, 386 nails, and a handful of bolts, this has run me about 1900 ish dollars. Now I was fortunate enough to get this blade sent to me for free by a viewer, but depending on labor cost and which materials you use, it might run you somewhere around 200 to maybe $400. That's just my guess. So for the price of rent on a single bedroom, 100 square foot apartment in the worst part of town, I was able to build this monstrosity. But the lemon chopper isn't done yet. And so in this video, I'm making a slight interlude to the main series to answer some questions, address some criticisms, and continue progress on my device as we approach the final chapter in this saga. Before I started this series, I had no idea how many guillotine building experts there were out there. Every step of the building process was met with responses from people saying how I was doing it all wrong, how I'm overbuilding, how I'm underbuilding, using screws when I should be using nails and nails when I should be using screws, how my railing system wouldn't work. Everything is so shoddily built. Like seriously, why would you put together anything like that? Not only are you overcomplicating it with additional bits and mechanics, but the structure isn't even sound. Even where it lands isn't properly secured. Wow. Where just blah, blah. Blade, you can't polish a turd. And of course, how I'm definitely using the wrong tools. Oh boy, the viewers have a lot to say about my tools. And I certainly got my fair share of comments criticizing me for not having the professional gear. All right, I mean, I get it. I'm not a pro. I'm just kind of using whatever I got. If it works, it works. Maybe they're right. Maybe it's time for me to upgrade my equipment, to get a real drill, a professional drill, one that people can't make fun of me for in the comments. So after a lot of thinking and a lot of research, I decided to upgrade my equipment and I got this. Black & Decker, 1500 RPM corded drill. Corded so that my battery stops dying on me. Infinite power all day long. Honestly, as a non-contractor, it's pretty funny hearing how much power tool brand loyalty exists in construction world. Why the wall? Jump! Why Milwaukee? Crap! It doesn't matter how affordable the tools are, how well they get the job done, or how long they last, there's always gonna be someone who's gonna call it shit. It's like listening to a bunch of soft hand little girls bitch about which Barbie doll is their favorite. Listen, while all you battery boys are playing with your little toys, us corded chads will be getting the job done. How long do you live after getting decapitated? There's this rumor that I always hear that a human can survive for several seconds to minutes after being decapitated. I decided to look into it, and some of the cases I found include the 1793 execution of Charlotte Corday, who was guillotined after killing Jean-Paul Murat, a radical journalist whose publications were prominent in fueling the French Revolution. After her decapitation, a fellow named Francois Le Gros, I don't know how to pronounce that, supposedly lifted up her head and slapped the cheeks. And according to onlookers, this caused Corday's face to show an angered expression and her lips to move apart as though she wished to speak. Another such incident is that of a physician named Dr. Borea, who attended the execution of Henry Langeel. After Henry's head fell off, Borea called out his name. To his surprise, he claimed to have witnessed Langille's eyes opening and focusing on him, and reported that his pupils contracted when exposed to bright light and dilated when darkness was introduced. There are a few more stories like this, but really they're all anecdotal and aren't supported by any scientific evidence. I already know what you're gonna say. That is not up to code. Fair enough. 
I mean, yeah, it is a little janky and I do have my concerns that it might snap right here in the middle. But for now, it's good enough for me. Now, while the evidence is inconclusive when it comes to human subjects, in 1954, Dr. Vladimir Demikov performed an experiment where he attached one dog's head onto the throat of another dog, reconnecting arteries so that the host provided blood flow to the newly attached head. The heads that he transplanted displayed complex behavior and survived up to 29 days. And in a 1975 study examining electroencephalogram findings in six decapitated rats, found that approximately 13.6 seconds of EEG activity followed the beheading, a finding that the researchers concluded was consistent with discomfort and pain. But it should be stated, however, that this study is criticized due to its low sample size. So from what I could find, the science is unsettled. The best evidence available currently suggests that loss of consciousness is nearly instant after decapitation. I don't know, I'm not a doctor. Well, what are your thoughts, Jeff? Can people survive after the guillotine? Please, please stop violating my neck hole every night for your filthy pleasure. Shut up. All right, so I don't know how many guillotines there are in the United States, or in the world for that matter, but I thought it would be cool if I could get the world record for the tallest guillotine. It's not like this is particularly tall, only about 20 feet from the base to the top. But I mean, how many guillotines really are there? Surely no one's tried to set the record yet. So I submitted mine to the Guinness Book of World Records, and six months later, I got this response. Unfortunately, after thoroughly reviewing your application with members of our research team, we are afraid to say that we cannot accept your proposal as a Guinness World Record title. While this is not a record title we officially recognize, upon initial research, our record managers have discovered reports of other attempts which appear to surpass your claim. 1,000 feet. Really, Guinness? So somewhere out there, there's a guillotine that's just as tall as the Eiffel Tower? Sounds like decapitation to me. Shut the fuck up! Please, if anyone knows where this 1,000-foot-tall guillotine is, let me know in the comments. Fucking liars. All right, so I wanna end this with a deleted scene from my last video. I ended up cutting it out because it didn't play out in my head the way that I thought it would. Uh, so I didn't bother polishing it up or making it look super pretty. So don't mind the choppiness of it. I think you'll get the point though. But before I play it, I have to do my capitalist due diligence and show off these new stickers, patches, and for a limited time, pins. These are gonna sell out quick, so if you want one, definitely grab them while you still can. I've purposely not been doing ad integrations on these videos. For one reason, uh, I feel like it just really killed the mood, having a one minute segment devoted to, I don't know, Raid Shadow Legends or some VPN. So it's because of the sale of my merch and also the support I get from people who contribute to my Patreon that I'm able to do all this insane stuff. This series has been seriously, probably the most rewarding thing that I've done on YouTube throughout my entire career, and I owe it all to you. I know that a lot of you are probably sick of me just talking about guillotines for almost a year now, but the series is coming to an end. There's only one video left, and then I can finally end it all for good. So I appreciate all of you for supporting me over the years and supporting this project. So stay tuned for what's to come. I don't think you'll be disappointed. And now here's the deleted scene with Carl, the Code Inspector. Thanks for watching. Ugh. Yep. That is not up the code. Sway brace is misaligned. What are these, drywall screws? Exterior framing screws. Joists are overspaced. Yep, whoever you contracted sure put a number on you, buddy. Jesus Christ. Does anyone in this state even know what a frost line is? Oh. <coughs> Things a death trap. What even is this? Some kind of playground for the kids or. It's a uh, lemonade stand. <coughs> lemonade stand, huh? 
God damn, I could go for some lemonade. <coughs> this heat got me thirstier in all hell. <coughs> well, I ain't gonna lie to you. Been doing inspections about 10 years now, and this thing just ain't safe. Liability waiting to happen. <laughs> this thirstier in all hell. Say, you friend, you wouldn't have anything I could uh, wet my beak with, would you? Sure would appreciate the hell out of it. Oh boy. Hate to be a bother. Hey, don't bother yourself, buddy. I found the tap. Bush's home style baked beans. I ain't had one of these in years. You mind if I grab one? Sure. Awesome. Well, you seem like an honest guy. I'm an honest guy. I ain't gonna jerk you around. You got a whole host of building code violations wrapped up in that thing. Now, I've been in this business long enough to look in a man's eye and know when he hasn't applied for the proper permits and... Well, this lemonade stand thing? Insufficient anchoring? Inadequate fasters? Non-compliant handrails? You got a heap of fines on you, buddy. Wouldn't be surprised if the court has you tear it down. Now, now. No need to panic. You seem like a good guy. Good, honest guy. I like to think that I am. Well, I couldn't help but notice you had a bottle of whiskey in there. Now, I don't see any reason to get the courts involved. Well, you say we have a few splashes and hash this out. Off the record. They blacklisted me on the website. And that they don't even show my videos to anyone, so fuck it. Oh. And I tell you what, these booby traps, I go into this one house, this guy's got a knife that comes down on a broomstick, nearly hits me in the face, this close to my eyeball. Stopped right there. I tell you, it was close, man. How is that possibly legal? It's not. Conservative, Democrat, it doesn't matter who you vote for. They all work for the same people at the end of the day. Oh, hold on. Well, there's a lake of stew and a whiskey too And you travel around in a big canoe In the big rock candy mountain Yeah! I mean, he had to be pushing 60 odd years, maybe more His wife had fallen ill before they could finish their dream house I guess it was kind of a last hurrah to get it done before she passed and and of course she died before he could finish it. Old stubborn mule just kept on going. I guess it was like a farewell gift to his recently departed. <coughs> Damn rush job if you ask me. I mean these old folks, they just got no consideration for modern construction standards. I'm talking unlevel framing, improper decay protection, not a damn plumb or level board to be found. He had his outlet space so far apart to make your hair stand on end. None of them GFI, mind you. And there I am, risking my life waiting for my foot to fall through the floor, the whole damn thing to fall on us. That's the risk I take to ensure the integrity of proper code enforcement. I mean, what choice did I have? It was a death trap. Had to be raised to the ground. Liability waiting to happen. Well, they got a Dollar General up there now, so the locals are happy. Damn dangerous business. Well, listen. I appreciate the hospitality, I really do. You're a nice guy, but I don't think I can let this one go. It's too dangerous. I mean, I'll do you a solid and give you a few weeks to tear it down, but if it's not gone by the time I'm back, what choice do I have? I'm gonna have to pull the plug and write up my report. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Well, no hard feelings, friend. Just the way it goes. Gotta put food on my table just like the next man. Well, thank you for the hospitality, and uh, we'll be in touch.